Build It, Make It, Play It. Hello, welcome to Build It, Make It, Play It. You are watching Emma's House Gets Extended, part one million. I mean part four. Wow, this series has become a bit of an epic, hasn't it? So if you've only just found this series of Emma's House videos, you have parts one, two and three to catch up on, you lucky things. So I have been asking for your suggestions and wow, have you responded. You are all full of such awesome ideas. So thank you very much for all of your lovely comments, suggestions, and also updates on your own builds too. I have been hearing about brand new stop motion animation projects, a four story, 14 room house. <gasps> Did I say that you were all awesome already? Well, you are. Anywho, back to the video. So what can you expect from part four? Well, for starters, I promised you a little surprise in the entrance hallway and the family are going to get a revamped bathroom. Plus, June and Robert are finally going to get a bedroom. Yes, shock, horror, a set of Lego friends' parents getting their own room. But what about Emma, I hear you cry. Do not fear, her bedroom is going to be completed along with the attic space in part five. So yes, another video coming up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, firstly, why not? And secondly, you're missing out on a notification to tell you when I've released part five with that all important Emma's bedroom. Anyway, on to the build. In my part three video, I had about a million comments all saying the same thing. Sophie needs a high chair. At first I thought, well, she's only a teeny bean like baby in swaddling. She doesn't need a high chair yet. But, you know, one day she'll grow up and of course she'll need one. But did I only build one measly high chair? No, I made three. Yes, I might have gone a bit mad experimenting with various ideas. So here are my high chair experiments in all different sizes and using various weird and wonderful bricks. My first high chair is basically a box shape with a chair back. It's the smallest of the lot, but Sophie is surprisingly a bit of a chunky little monkey and doesn't quite fit in there. On to high chair number two, which uses a white car wheel arch. Yes, you heard that right. I'm using Lego car parts to make the tray to hold her in. She fits a little better in there, but it doesn't quite hold her in steady enough. And chair number three. This is becoming a bit like an extract from Goldilocks. Whilst it's massive, it fits Sophie just right. In she pops nice and snug and protected inside that colossal tray made of a white arch brick. There we have it, three different high chairs. Well, I didn't want to let you all down, did I? Okay, let's start this build off with the entrance hallway. So I'm going to remove all of the other rooms around it quickly just to get it back to that hallway space. There are a few elements that I really don't want to keep in here, like this grey stud brick, and I have plans to add something else in up here. So, like all of my builds so far, let's start by ripping this all apart again. I promise to build my houses in a different way next time, so you don't have to constantly see me deconstructing them all the time. In goes that white stud brick, and I'm popping in this double stud brick as well, and adding on that outside pillar and the rest of the wall again. On that double stud brick goes a little clock. So I'm not overly loving that big white brick jutting out from under the windows and I'm not loving the cream plate that sits on it either. I think we can make that look a little bit neater. Out it all comes and it's been replaced with these thinner white blocks instead. On goes that extended cream base plate and I also want to extend out that lower wall line because I want to build up a very useful wall in between two windows. So I'm just building up the beginnings of that wall and popping in a couple of little clip bricks building it up a bit more and adding in three hook bricks. You know when in your house you have something weird like a random golf club and no one knows where it came from or why you have it because no one in your house plays golf. Yeah, this is that and of course an umbrella. No entrance hallway is complete without one. Next, I'm building up a super simple bench for the family to sit on to put on their shoes and coats. It's just made up of a white two by four, a lattice fence piece and a tile. On those hook bricks, we can hang up their coats. You're gonna have to use your imagination here. Maybe a bike helmet. Okay, maybe not a bike helmet. I might need a better plan for that. Let's top off all of those walls and hold them all together. Next, I'm filling in this gap with some cream bricks. 
and building out the floor a little bit more so that it can hold Sophie's push chair or stroller if you're in the US. In this little nook by the door, we're going to build up a purple cabinet. I'm going to build it out a little bit more so it fits into that section by the door a little bit neater. Topping it off with some stud bricks and a tile. On goes their unopened post. And that looks like the vase of flowers from the shopping mall. Either they were inspired to create the same look in their house, or there might be a detail missing from the shopping mall. So, on to my big hallway surprise. If you watch Lego Friends Girls on a Mission, you'll be aware that Emma's stepdad Robert is a member of the Rad Dads as their drummer. Here he is on stage playing with the other dads on a pinky purple coloured drum kit. And I wanted to create something along the lines of this drum kit for Robert to practice on at home. Oh dear, June is going to hate me, isn't she? So I'm building up this bass drum from the base of the drum kit that comes with Andrea's family house. But mine is going to be a little bit bigger and a bit better. Here's our first purple element. On goes a purple round tile onto that half cylinder block. On that clicks to that angled brick. Add in two connector bricks onto the back of the bass drum and finishing it off with a reverse white circular tile for the bass drum skin. Popping a couple of grey studs onto those connectors and adding on two grey taps of all things. Next, I'm building up two tom-toms out of grey and purple round bricks and a white tile for the skin. And here's the other one already built. There you are, the start of a drum kit. Next up, I'm making the snare drum, popping in this connector rod into a round grey brick. On top of that, I'm building the snare drum out of similar parts to the tom-toms. I should say that I used to be a drummer, so this is right up my street building this. I'm absolutely loving it. Next is the floor tom, which is the deepest drum, so I'm going to use this purple cylindrical brick and adding on a couple of grey studs and a round jumper for the bass. On to the hi-hat cymbals popping an open grey stud and this lovely shiny silver stud for the floor pedal. In goes a grey rod and using an upside down grey dish for the bottom cymbal and another dish with a stud inside as a spacer for the top cymbal. It's the crash cymbal next and it's super simple to build. In goes a rod into another grey stud and I'm using a larger radar dish for this cymbal. Next it's the ride cymbal and this one is a bit trickier because you need to have an angled stand for it. Using the same larger radar dish, I'm using, of all things, a grey gun piece to create an angled connector. It's weird, but it works. Slotting this clip arm onto the end of it and that clips onto that grey rod. It doesn't quite create the angle that you'd normally get from a ride cymbal stand, but you get the idea. And lastly, Robert needs a drum stool to sit on. Let's bring that hallway back in again and get this drum kit in. On goes the snare drum, hi-hat, drum stool, bass and toms. On goes the floor tom, crash cymbal, and finally the ride cymbal. One drum kit all ready for Robert to practice on and drive his family crazy. Look, here comes Robert with his drumsticks, aka Harry Potter wands, to give it a go. Oops, <laughs> move that ride symbol out of the way. So, what do you think, Robert? Do you like it? So, I couldn't do the entrance hallway without making one of my custom stickers, could I? So, here is a little welcome mat to put by the front door. Oops, I knocked the high hat over. On you go again. Let's click this entrance hallway back into the rest of the house again. On goes that pillar. Not sure I like the purple pillar brick anymore. That might need to go. On goes the plant and in goes Sophie's pushchair again. We're on to the bathroom next. Let's have a quick look at the original bathroom. Hmm, it's a little bit dated now. I think we can do better, don't you? Right, let's rip everything out and start all over again. I think this family deserve a bigger and more modern bathroom. I'm actually going to extend out the floor line a little, so I can't believe I'm saying this again. I need to take off all of these walls. I'm going to be known as the demolition Lego builder, aren't I? With surgeon-like precision, not, I'm transplanting all of those purple bricks over to the thin base plate that I want to extend the room out by. I'm hoping doing it this way round and starting with the smaller base plate attached to three wall lines, it will help to strengthen the floor. In goes the purple pillar on the left hand side, but I'm actually going to change the wall on this side completely. 
The wall on the left has been built up with these white wall panels and I'm topping it off with this thin blue 1x8 as a bit of colour detailing. On goes a white pillar to cover up that purple. Popping on a stud brick. I need a particular kind of connector neck so I'm using the bottom of a lever. Now you need a bit of brute force here to remove that lever. Next I'm building up the wall with a series of stud bricks and white bricks. On goes another one of those levers as a connector and you'll see why in a second. Oops, I need a clip brick in there. Anchoring that white pillar into the wall and I'm going to be adding in details onto those stud bricks next. On goes a lever as a shower dial and adding on a grey tap. I've made this shower head out of a connector brick, a couple of studs and a transparent blue dish. Super simple. We need a bath in this space here. Here's Emma's original bath and I'd like to use this as my base. Off come the taps and those grey bricks underneath because I'm going to replace them with some white connector bricks to keep the colour consistent. So I'd like to build up the tap end of the bath with a bit of a rounded retro bath feel so I'm going to be adding on these curved bricks. Ah fluff! Remind me not to build whilst I'm wearing a fluffy green jumper. Building up the back of where the bath is going to sit and I'm topping off that ledge with a white tile. On goes a rubber ducky. Squash that bath into place there. Hmm, that duck looks a bit low. Let's pop him on a white stud brick and get him up to the same level as that white tile. If he'll go on. Much better. Remember those levers that I'm going to be using as connectors? They're for a shower screen. This is just a small window panel but it fits into these slots perfectly. There's a bit of dead space here and I can't leave that empty. So I'm going to make a kind of open bathroom cabinet. Starting off with a blue jumper plate and in comes little flounder. I thought he'd make a good bath toy for the kids. Popping in some transparent blue wall panels to build up the sides of the cabinet. And topping those off with a blue 2x4 and look it lines up perfectly with that blue strip. So this blue bathroom wall panel is from Stephanie's house. I never quite understood why there was a transparent window between their bathroom and office space. Bit of a weird feature so now it's part of Emma's bathroom instead. Let's tie that into the wall behind and add in some transparent blue 2x1s to finish off that shelf line. I think we need some more bath toys. Here's a little turtle and June's special bubble bath which is kept out of reach of the children. Let's give it a go and see how special it is. It is quite bubbly isn't it? When is it going to stop? <laughs> Oops. Let's add in a little bath mat with this blue grill piece. On to the other wall next. I'm actually, shock horror, going to cover up the original purple wall panel. It doesn't match the new bathroom colours but we still need to keep the purple colour on the outside of the house. In goes a white pillar to start off our new wall line and I'm going to tie that in to stop it wobbling around. Carrying on the new wall with a flat 2x8 and building up the front of that white pillar. Popping in a white 2x4 and adding in a 1x4 on the back. Next to that I'm adding a short white pillar and topping those off with the same blue bricks that I used on the other side for consistency. I need to build up the wall height a little bit more. On goes a stud brick and a mirrored wall panel. On that stud brick I'm adding a grey circular tile and a tap. Adding another short pillar and a 2x1. I'm making a bigger sink than the original one so I'm going to use these large angled bricks to form the outside of the sink and popping them onto a 1x6. In that goes under that tap but I've forgotten to put in the plug hole so out comes the tap and in goes a white grill piece. Popping on a 2x2 for a sink counter and building up the rest of that wall line. But on the top I'm adding in a little hinge brick as a hand towel rail. Let's tie all of those bricks together and top them off with a long white tile. So yes, I grabbed that purple pillar from the arch downstairs and I'm going to use it up here in the bathroom instead to build out the outer wall. On go all of the other bricks again. Next I'm building up the toilet cistern and adding on a flush button. The toilet is simply made out of an upside down angled brick with a white tile on top. I had to get one of my custom stickers in here too so I found this amazing little tube accessory. Goodness knows which set it came from, I haven't got a clue. But I drew three squiggly lines in Photoshop and printed it off onto sticky vinyl. There we go, super simple toothpaste. And I'm going to make a little hand soap dispenser out of a transparent barrel and a white tap. Oops, I need to shuffle things around, that doesn't quite fit on there. So there's a bit of dead space here and I'm going to pop in a chrome railing as a towel rail. 
I'm beginning to think I should have covered up the purple at the bottom of this wall here. What do you think? Let's finish off the top of this wall. Not 100% sure about the purple here again, if I'm honest. I might change that. Shall we pop this in place and see how it's looking in the rest of the house? Um, yeah, <laughs> that's not good. I didn't quite think ahead to what this would be like next to Henry's bedroom wall, did I? Those wall panels have huge holes behind them. Off it comes again. Right, I thought I was being clever by using those wall panels. Turns out that wasn't such a smart idea. I need to build the wall up with some white bricks instead. So again, with surgeon-like precision, I need to extract this bathroom wall carefully and replace those wall panels. On go the bricks for the top of the wall. Much better. And I've decided to ditch those purple bricks I had at the top of the wall and build up the top of that cabinet a bit more. That looks so much cleaner. Same on the other side. I want to cover up as many of those purple bricks as I can. Take two, let's try this again. There we go, no more gaping holes in the wall and popping on the roof terrace again. Next, we're on to June and Robert's parents' bedroom. They are finally going to get their own tranquil space to escape to. So I want to make their bedroom much, much bigger, which means swapping this base plate over with a larger one. So again, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm removing all of the walls again. Oh wow, those windows came out in one piece. In comes a bigger white base plate and I'm going to add those windows on again, making sure it has that overlap. On goes some purple one by ones and a purple pillar just to keep that color consistency on the front of the house. This wall on the right hand side is going to get a makeover. So I'm building up a custom wall out of white and light blue stripes. Up the wall goes. Oops, I forgot to add in a stud brick here. In that goes and finishing off the top of the wall and making sure there's a purple brick for the front of the house. Same as in the bathroom, I want to cover up that flash of purple with a white pillar. My first items of furniture for June and Robert's bedroom are going to be a couple of bedside tables. Starting with a simple white cabinet with a jumper brick on top that's going to hold a strange egg-shaped accessory. So I'm kind of imagining this is going to be a kind of modern baby monitor, or it could be a new age sleeping aid that glows and plays the songs of the whales or croaking frogs or something. Anything to help them get to sleep. Next is a hinge plate that is going to hold the elements to make up a fancy radio alarm clock. The next bedside table is also topped off with jumper bricks. Again, holding another hinged plate, but this one is going to hold a selfie photograph of the family. Maybe in the days before Sophie came along, she's not there. Yes, it's another one of my custom stickers and I photographed the family in my garden. And this is some kind of nighttime reading. June's reading something about Switzerland or Austria, I think. Let's get those into place. My next item of furniture is one of those tall Japanese paper lamps. On a white rod, I'm popping on some white open studs and then topping it off with a white closed stud. I'm going to place that next to this cabinet here for now. We need a bed to fill this space. I'm going to have a bit of a rant to start off with. Why is it that Lego always seem to make beds that don't fit the characters properly? So this is the bed that originally came in Emma's house. Let's bring in June. Look, she looks relatively comfortable there. But in comes Robert and a whole world of hurt starts. Oh, Robert, poor June is on the floor. Yeah, June isn't taking any of that. Out Robert goes. But Robert is fighting back for bed space and ends up losing. June gets an okay night's sleep and poor Robert is relegated to the floor again. But meanwhile, June's feet have been poking out of bed all night and she's got cold feet. Enough is enough, Lego. We need parents' bedrooms with proper sized beds that two characters can fit in. So that's what I'm gonna build now. Starting off by building up a base out of a couple of two by sixes and three two by eights. I'm going to build up the foot of the bed and start to build up the base of our duvet next. Building up the height of that duvet area and adding on white and teal colored tiles and curved bricks to build up that white duvet and a teal throw blanket to keep June's feet warm. I want to have quite a curvy feel to the bed, so I'm popping on this curved brick. 
which I always think looks like a telephone. Now I'm building up an area that's going to look like a turned over sheet and I'm doing this by building up the level a little bit higher and adding on these curved bricks. See it sticks up above the duvet a bit. So this bed needs some pillows and I'm going to use these taller curved bricks to create a pillow area. Topping those off with a white tile and finishing off the edges of the pillows with these angled bricks. Next I need a bed head and again I want to keep a curvy feel. So I'm using this arch piece to create a modern headboard. I probably don't actually need to but I'm going to top off these two studs with a small tile. And finishing off the foot of the bed with these posts made out of white barrel bricks and circular tiles. There we go, one finished parent's bed. Bringing June back in. Yeah, she looks pretty comfortable there and her feet aren't hanging off the end of the bed. Does Robert fit in too? Yes, he does. Yay, a bed that both characters fit onto and no arguments. Don't get too comfortable, you two. We need to get this back in the room. That fits in quite nicely there. On that stud brick there, I have created a custom piece of artwork to go onto the wall. So I've made this cherry blossom picture, printed it off onto my usual sticky vinyl and popped it onto a white tile. I think it helps to create a more tranquil feeling to the room. What do you think? Next, we need to build up the wall on the other side. Again, I need to keep this purple colouring because it's an outer wall. But like the bathroom, I'm going to be building in front of it so that we see as little purple as possible. But yes, okay, fine. I have two white wall panels in there for now. I'm going to replace them with some purple ones. Don't worry, I'm probably gonna do that in part five if I'm honest, so ignore those for now. So in this space here, I'm going to build a wardrobe. Starting off with a two by four white brick, and I'm going to add on a white drawer unit and building up the walls of the wardrobe with a white pillar. The back of the wardrobe I'm going to build up in smaller pieces because I want to add in a hook brick here so that June and Robert can hang up some clothes inside. Again, you're going to have to use your imagination with this one. On goes the door, making sure that purple cloak isn't in the way and topping it off with a teal tile. There we go, one opening wardrobe with hanging space. It's not quite the walk-in wardrobe that a few of you requested, which I thought was an awesome idea, but maybe one day I'll extend the house even more and make it for you. What do you think? And that goes to cover up that purple wall panel. The next piece of furniture that I'm going to make, I'm going to have to build up in situ. So, I'm imagining that June is a bit of a handbag fanatic and she likes to spend her money on expensive handbags. So, I need to give her somewhere to display her collection. It's a very simple build, just using small wall panels and adding on two by twos with jumper bricks on to place the handbags onto. It's a small handbag collection, I'll give you that, but one that June is obviously very proud of. In this space here, I want to add in a big dressing table for June. From a flat 2x8, I'm adding on various white bricks and creating the base for our dressing table unit. On goes a clip brick and a door panel in the same style as the wardrobe door. Popping on some flat bricks to hold everything together. And I want to top that off with some light blue bricks that tie in with the colour of the stripes in the wall on the other side of the room. So in amongst my massive box of secondhand Lego, I found this dressing table wall panel. And I have no idea where it's come from. Does anybody out there know? Can you please let me know in the comments? Popping on two yellow transparent bricks and these are going to be some dressing table lights. And building up the height of that wall panel. And I'm making a hairdryer out of a blue spanner. Popping a couple of stud bricks in and a blue transparent radar dish. And adding in a hairbrush and a lipstick into two pink flowers. So I'm going to continue with my weird and wonderful use of accessories to create things for this dressing table. And yes, I'm using a gold unicorn horn, but it makes a really good jewelry holder because it holds all of these gold rings and necklaces on perfectly. We need some lotions and potions now for June's dressing table. So I have this purple barrel brick and I've added on a matching dots star stud onto the top. Next, I'm making a little pump dispenser out of a clear barrel brick and a blue tap. And this next one with a heart on top came out of the original bathroom. Okay, let's pop that in place and squash that down. So there's a bit of empty space over here by this window and I want to cover up that mismatch of purple bricks here. So I'm going to build them a super simple sofa. Starting off with a white two x four and adding on a teal tile. 
Next, I'm going to build up a kind of floating arm out of this tall curved brick. And here's another one that I've already built. Next, I'm building up the back of the sofa with a series of white bricks and topping it off with a white tile. So I didn't add these onto a base plate to hold them all together because I don't really want the sofa to be that high. So let's reconstruct that sofa inside the bedroom, popping on those arms either side and finishing off the wall on the left hand side with those purple bricks again. Ugh, my window's too low. I'm just going to bump that up a bit and finishing it off with some pink tiles. So I have an opportunity here to tie in that dressing table into the wall. So I'm just gonna take off a couple of bricks here and just add in a two by four just to hold it into that wall panel. There we go, that's much stronger. And finishing off that stripy wall on the right hand side with some pink tiles. Next, I'm just neatening up the top of those white pillars. I've made a really simple dressing table stool out of a white cylindrical brick and some teal dots. In goes a teal tile as a rug probably could have made a custom sticker for this, couldn't I? And a really simple teal cushion to go onto the bed. So now we have the sofa in the room. I'm kind of thinking this Japanese paper lantern is actually a bit squashed away in the corner. So I want to bring it out and pop it next to that sofa. In comes Robert to test out the new bedroom sofa. Let's move that cushion out of the way because in comes June. She wants to try out that bed again. There we go, a parent's bedroom for June and Robert. It's a nice tranquil setting for them to escape from the children too. So in order for me to put on June and Robert's bedroom, I need to extend out the wall line downstairs in Emma's bedroom for me to actually anchor the bedroom onto. This is by no means going to be the final wall layout for Emma's bedroom, which is going to change again in part five, but I need something that I can anchor June and Robert's bedroom onto for now. In comes June and Robert's bedroom. There we go, that sits on there quite nicely. It's so much bigger than Sophie's bedroom. I might have to do something on the wall line in Sophie's bedroom on the left hand side. So there we have it. We have three more rooms complete and there's still more to do. I can't believe there's more to do, wow. So let's have a last look around these new bedrooms. Oh look, June is fast asleep already. She's absolutely loving her new bedroom and that new bed, wow. She must be so comfortable there. And there's Emma and Chico and Emma's standing there going, where is my bedroom? Why is my bedroom not finished? Don't worry, Emma, your bedroom is going to be finished in part five and it's going to be awesome. Meanwhile, Robert is giving his drum kit a good try. Poor little Sophie is sat there in her small high chair listening to Robert drumming away. I hope you get used to this, Sophie. It's going to be a noisy old household. And I've got to finish off the hallway with another house plant. Upstairs, Henry is testing out that brand new bubble bath. Let's pop in another blue tile as a bath mat. Hang on a minute, I've just realised that Henry is in the bathroom unaccompanied. Let's pop in a little stool because big sister Emma is here to look after little Henry. Yay, part four is complete. It's part five next. So what's coming up in part five? Well, we've got something very funky going into the attic and I'm not talking about spiders and Star Wars memorabilia again. I may well do something a little bit extra with those roof terraces. And of course, we've got Emma's bedroom. And it's got to be all about cats, art, and cheese. So yes, part five is coming next. So don't forget to subscribe so you're first to hear when the video goes online. Thank you so, so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. And keep those comments and suggestions rolling in. I am loving hearing from you all. Until the next time, I shall see you soon.